Good morning, y'all, for day three here in Turkey in our third one in Istanbul. Now, we're here again with Coronary Backstreets and my buddy Uur. Today, we're exploring his area. We're in Kirtulis, which is a little bit north of the walking area on the European side. Now, this area is very fascinating because it used to be inhabited by a lot of Greeks and Armenians, but it's slowly changing. As you walk through it, you can go through areas that are becoming more hipster. You see younger generations in lots of cafes, and then you see a lot of immigrants from maybe Syria, Iraq, and Africa as well. So it's a very diverse area. Today, we're going to be exploring actually Gaziantep cuisine, which is from the southeast part of Turkey. We're going to be seeing how lavash is made. We're going to be exploring the produce. So we've got a lot planned and even more than that. So we're going to go ahead and get it started. The best part, you're coming with me today. So let's head that way. And we came over to, to, to a real residential area. You see you got the football field across here, the dog park. You just see the apartment buildings. We're actually starting off with uh, breakfast at a place from the Erzincan. It's a region in Turkey on the east side, landlocked. Um, Yomaz would be the owner. Tendir is like a tendori in Evia's house. So pretty much it's just uh, Erzincan's person's tendori house. We're gonna get in here, get some lavash bread, get some cheese, honey, and some other things as well. <laughs> And look at the effort and layout of this restaurant from old cooking utensils and pots and pans to garments, I'm gonna guess it's from the region, to the, the honey, different colors and types of honey. They got the honeycomb, they got the cheeses, you got the ladies cooking on the tandoor in the back. And then even the fireplace in here, it's this rustic cabin feel when you walk in here. Are they from Erzincan? Yeah, the ladies? Yeah, I can ask. <laughs> They're all from Erzincan, yeah. So of course we got the tandoor in the house, it is hot and steamy in here. It is a skill, it looks easy, but I tr promise you it's harder than it looks. Hey, we got a little bit of everything here. We got butter, clotted cream, two types of cheeses, the dalum, which is a very unique cheese, the lavash, honey and comb, and some cured beef. And you can just hear that bread just crisp and crumble and fall apart, almost like a thin, thin cracker. So this is tulum cheese. This is the cheese we saw on the very first day of exploring in Istanbul. I don't know if you remember it, but it was in the hide of that goat. I'll have to show you a picture so you remind it. They take that and they let it age in there. And then when it's ready, they'll cut the hide and you can take the cheese out. So I'm just gonna get that lavash while it's still warm, get some butter all in it, and a little bit of that tulum cheese. Mm. Great job on that lavash being so thin. Got a little bit of crisp to it. You get that butter on it, it starts to melt just a little bit. But the tulum cheese, that's the interesting part. <laughs> kind of crumbles and eats a lot like a feta, but it's a little bit sharper, a little little bolder of a flavor. I'm kind of a roll person. I always do the durum. I like to roll it myself. Finally got some more fresh lavash out here. So you see that butter is going to get really melty this time. Ooh, wow. It may feel like you're in a rustic area, like you can sit here and chill and you can, but it's all about speed. And then get that butter melted on the lavash and you're going to be all right. <laughs> So now what you can do is just kind of mix and match how you want with the cured beef, the eggs, and a little beef in there. Get it all wrapped in your lavash bread. Actually, 
Gotta get a little more of that honey. Gotta get one for the road. Keep me tied over till that next spot though. Mm. What makes this place stand above is this man is a perfectionist. Goes back to his village for two months every year. This place doesn't stay open, it closes down to produce the honey, to produce that cured meat for your breakfast. He is not worried about profit, he is more worried about quality, and that's what's gonna result in an unforgettable breakfast. Now we're here for something we just ate, the lavash bread. This is actually a lavash bakery. We're gonna get in here, see how long it's been around, talk more about the history of the bread itself. Ooh, and as soon as you walk in, you're wafted with not only warmth, but a leavened baked bread aroma. If that is, that's like a warm hug for me. I don't know about y'all. So lavash bread is very interesting because its origin is still a little bit debated. Uh, mainly people are going to say it came from Armenia, but when you get into Armenia, it's sometimes you get it as an unleavened, meaning it doesn't have the yeast or rice. But in Turkey, which you can see what they're using here, they're letting it proof, they're letting it, that yeast work, they're letting it rise first before flattening it out. So this family business has actually been going on for 25 years and a lady right here in the blue has been working since she was 10. And while they're cooking with the tandoor, I know they used to, I don't know if they still do, you can see it with what's called a tawa, which would be a caved little just flat top and you lay the bread over it and it cooks in two to three seconds. The reason the lavash bread so popular became so popular is because, you know, when it first was invented, they didn't have things like ovens. They couldn't do thick breads. So the beauty of this was not only that it cooks in two to three seconds, but it cooks all the way through. So these guys are the wholesalers, pretty much of the art shops which is just now starting, but of course uh, now they're bringing it from much warmer climates such as like Cyprus, which is already warmer than here. As the season progresses, uh, they start bringing it from the Aegean coast of Turkey, like Izmir area. Uh, they make it again seem very easy, but the artichokes are actually very hard texture. So it's a sort of knife skill and a lot of muscle work uh, it takes. <laughs> So this is where they get their shipment, it just came in, you see season's just starting, this is a small pile for them, usually it would be piled way high and it's, you have to be so precise with artichokes, artichokes actually the immature bud of a thistle plant, so you have to pick it just at the right time. I didn't know you could eat them raw. Very green. Very, very good. <laughs> I think I like mine roasted with a lot of butter and olive oil. Better. So we are at a place called Damla Dondurma Boza. Dondurma is the Turkish for ice cream and in the summer it's hugely popular with these guys. Whereas in the winter it's another winter specialty in Turkey that they uh, make called Boza. Which is a fermented millet drink. Millet, water and sugar are mixed together and uh, they let it sit and ferment itself. <laughs> That is 
thick and creamy. Almost looks more like a porridge. I have roasted chickpeas on top. Mm. It's got the consistency of kind of like an eggnog. I like the cinnamon in there. I like that sweet and sour, milky, thick cream with a touch of cinnamon on there. And then the chickpeas, you need those just for like a crunch factor or something to kind of break this up. It's kind of funny. It tastes like milky and creamy, but there's nothing in it at all. Just that millet left to ferment. It's still pretty sweet right now, but it could if you want to leave it out longer and get a little more sour. Okay, we're back over here on the main road of this area. We're head for a lunch spot that is really famous for its like home style dishes from the southeast part of Turkey. Think like Gaziantep. Now, Gaziantep is a city that is world renowned as a culinary destination. We're gonna go there specifically for a stew, a yogurt based stew called Yuvalama. We're gonna get Uvech, and we're gonna get a few other things and get a whole little platter and table full of uh, lunch home cooked specialties. Isn't it amazing that pretty much maybe one, two, or three people are responsible for this whole spread right here? Now, before I was coming here, you can see right here we got the Yuvalama, which is that Gaziantep special dish, which I'll talk about a little more later. I was most excited about it before we came in, but then I saw the Guvetch, and now that may be my new number one. In the atmosphere of it, you got these big open windows. You can watch the busy street. This is one of the main streets right here in this area. It's white, it's pure, it's minimalistic. It's a nice, vibrant lunch spot. Get out of your desk, get out of your world work zone and get here and just get refreshed and get ready to go back to work after a delicious lunch. Now the fact that this restaurant is doing Yuba Lama is incredible. This is just such a special occasion dish. It's something you see around weddings, uh, special guests come over to your home, or even Ramadan, eating for eat a lot because it's such a communal dish made together. If you know your neighbor's making it, you go over there, you help them make it. It's not just a family, but a whole community come together to make the small meatballs that go in this. So to see a restaurant that's producing this every day is really, really amazing. So you see we're in here, he's already getting started, got that yogurt base going. You see it's very, it's thinned out a lot. I'm sure he's added some water to it, but there's gonna be a little bit of flour, yogurt, uh, looks like mint and egg whites. Oh, that yogurt, that tangy yogurt just wafts in your face as he pours that. And look at that, look at that thickness on that yogurt sauce and you see you got a little bit of the meatballs here and chickpeas. It's really funny for me because it's a very tangy yogurt that's used for it, but because they've added some flour into it, it's kind of built like this almost buttermilk gravy consistency as well. A little more watered down, but let's get that yogurt tanginess that comes through. You bite into a nice soft tender meatball and the chickpeas just turns into instant creaminess. And nothing at all like I thought it would taste like. Yeah, I'm kind of sad that's only special occasion. I could crave this much more than just special occasions. Oh. <laughs> ragu vetch looks like it's turned into just like a complete ragu sauce. Look at that oil hanging out at the bottom there. Those vegetables have just disintegrated. So now he's prepping a dish called Guvetch, which actually is the clay pot he's doing, but it also pertains to the dish. Every time you hear that name, you think of this dish. You can have different varieties, but 
specifically this one is associated with that name. You can see he started off with the lamb, layered that at the bottom, and then a big old layer of eggplant, and we're gonna keep layering the vegetables. So he just added salt. He had two types of red pepper. You see a deeper, darker red one that's gonna have more of a paprika flavor. Then the last one, the black one, is another type of chili. It's a, it's when they do the type of drying process for the chili, it actually turns to that black color and then finish it off with a little black pepper. I've never seen butter come in a log like that, but that was actually butter, sunflower oil, and then a mountain of tomatoes. <laughs> Look at this, it's literally a mountain. I saw them make this dish and it looked so simple, but wow, those dried chilies just come through and in. Not just with that rich smokiness, but that heat, that lamb. Whew. Get a little fat on it where it melts in your mouth, disintegrates, strings out like a nice rose. And all those vegetables are not distinct. They've just developed into their own delicious sauce. Look at that oil just coating the bottom of that plate. Going for another bite, don't mind if I do. We're breaking up our Eastern cuisine with a little bit of Western dish right here. We got the leeks cooked in olive oil, got some carrots, onion here. It's actually supposed to be eaten before the other stuff, so, oops. Wow. There's two things that give away this to the West, olive oil, and then a vegetable based dish right here. Those leeks are just incredibly tender and sweet though. And you gotta use olive oil though, because there's not a lot of flavor there, so olive oil adds that richness and that flavor. Got some yogurt here, but I think I'm just gonna go plain. I'm hoping that sumac water mixture they cook this in is really gonna help make this nice and tangy. I like this region. They bring that heat, man. Ooh, there's a lot of business people showed up. They need some home cooking. They got busy real quick, so we're gonna get out of there and we're gonna head to our next little spot. It's the name of the dish, Topic. Originally an Armenian dish. And originally it was uh, created to, uh, for them to have it during the fasting times, when they don't eat any animal products during the Christian fasting periods. It will feel a little bit like uh, it has meat in the center, but it doesn't have any meat. Uh, the outside is made from the chickpeas mainly and the potatoes mashed down together. Nowadays though, in uh, modern day Istanbul, it has become a very standard and very uh, popular meze at the Raka restaurants at the Meyhanis. That had to be cinnamon. That smells cinnamony. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know about y'all, that looks like meat to me. Whoa. The outside's almost like a mashed potato texture. The inside is the caramelized onions. That kind of blows my mind because I really want to go to like, it was meat, it was meat, it's meat, it's meat. It's not meat. That uh, cinnamon is pure cinnamon because that is just an intense cinnamon flavor. Enhances the sweetness of everything else in that dish. Wow, that is a lot happening there. I mean, it's savory, but you hit a current and it's got like this balance between savory and sweet. It's cinnamon. Oh! <laughs> I 
can't even figure out how to get in here. You walk in here and you, you feel the presence of powerful women from the radio being mainly women to her presence. She's kind of got like a, an America, a rosy look to her with her bandana and the way she's dressed and she just comes off as a strong, confident character. So she's actually of Armenian descent, but it's her travels that inspire her cooking more. Having traveled to Spain, she's most famous for her beef ribs, which she's pairing right now, but she's gonna do it from techniques and cooking style, which she learned during her travels in Spain. So the... <clears throat> So this is how she prepares her beef ribs, you see, the way she lays it down, keeps it very, very simple. I mean, that has some very fresh time. But other than that, really gonna let the meat do a lot of the talking and then cook it low and slow for a long time. Five hours for maybe a small rack, up to 10 for a big. When you bring a pickle plate out like that and you got okra on it, I ain't got time to sit down before I try this. That's really well done. Stay away from this. There's so much garlic and coriander seed in this. Look at this bone right here. It got like, look at that bone. We got a little like Fred Flintstone action going on here. A little dinosaur bone. Look at the jiggle factor of this right here, y'all. That jiggle factor dancing for us. Can't even, can't even pick it up, y'all. That is just like meat jello. Big succulent piece here, lots of that fat. You're gonna need some acidity from that pickling. It feels like it's been low and slow, just cooking in its own juices for five to 10 hours. The way that cartilage, that fat, it just become a gelatinous melt in your mouth texture. And the protein on this, while it's stringy, while it's falling apart, it has not dried out. Let's go ahead and get that carrot on there now. I think having that carrot that's been pickled with the meat in one bite is how you gotta go. So we had to come over here and hop in a little like pudding shop because there's this Turkish dessert that it just it's gonna intrigue you when you hear it. You're either gonna run away from it or you're gonna wanna try it. It is a Turkish milk pudding with chicken breast. Uh, this was the way of Titan uh, back in the mid ages, all throughout Europe as well. Mixing of the meats and the sweets together, like the British meat pie used to have real meat in it, whereas now it's much more simplified. And now including Turkey, we have the savouries first and ending the meal with a dessert, but this is just one of these uh, things that's uh, reminiscent of these earlier centuries when they were combining uh, those sweets and savouries together. Specifically and only made for this dessert. As you can see, it is a flat tip rather than the typical rounded uh, dessert spoon. Yeah, this is a very ancient dish. It first started with the Romans, then went to the Byzantine Empire and later to the Ottomans. Um, actually, if you read the Canterbury Tales, there's a very similar dish like this in the Canterbury Tales. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like a mochi. That's why, that's why yeah, it's like a mochi. Exactly. It's literally just like a mochi, which makes sense because they use a rice starch to really thicken this, but I can't even, I can't even pick this up. Oh my gosh. this. Fancy spoon's not helping me either. I 
I didn't think I was ever gonna get a piece to eat. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna be able to talk for a while. It's like milk pudding flavor in like this mochi, marshmallow, gooey form. I'm glad I got a little bit of cinnamon on top to kind of help enhance the flavor. We got ours with the burnt sugar on the top, which is a nice addition for me as well. There's no chicken flavor, of course, because after cooking that chicken, they dunked it in water and dunked it in water and pounded it and pounded it so much, you're not gonna be able to recognize it at all, except for this very faint, and the only reason I notice it, because I know there's chicken in there, stringy, fibrous texture. kind of really ingenious if you think about it. They're using like the protein from the chicken as like a thickening agent. And the best part about this, if you're somebody who doesn't like it, you can take it home and you got a leaky roof or something like that, you can clog it and you'll be good to go. Oh gosh. Ooh, that cinnamon ginger yeah. uh, topping. Okay, so this morning we came in for the cold drink. Now we're coming in for a hot drink, Salep. What it is, is the orchid bulb. We have to take it and dry it out, crush it into a powder form, mix it with the milk and sugar and cook it. And now we've topped it with a little cinnamon and ginger. Get it while it's hot, but not too hot. It was still too hot. The roof of my mouth just got destroyed. <laughs> that orchid bulb that's been put in there, there's, there's not much of a flavor. It just kind of gets that aftertaste, fills the mouth with richer, more floral depth notes than what pure milk and sugar can do. It never cools down. Rule 101, drinking this, the smallest sips you've ever taken in your life. Family place, brothers, been open since 1994. Got these seasonal drinks. And I'm pretty sure the ice cream's good too. I'll have to come back during the summer, try that out as well, but really nice spot to get. And for the last place today, we are at a classic, Adana. Ojakbashi. So Ojakbashi actually translates just to like stand by the fire grill or like next to the fire. So that's going to give you a little hint of what this restaurant's like. You walk in and you're going to have somebody on the grill. They'll have a big ventilator and you can sit right next to it. Like I said, this is a staple. Been here since 1978 and it's just popular with the masses. So yeah, I can't have a name like that not sit right next to the grill. Let me see how long it really is. We got all the sweet breads right here, so we gotta probably get a few of those. We'll have the grill master step up here in a second and get going. Uh, this is a very traditional, typical uh, rocky glass, always a long skinny glass we use. And some of the glasses will have some markings on it to show you how much of the spirit uh, the rocket to fill. Because we, in Turkey, when we are having it, we always mix it with water. Uh, if you like a single, it's over here, which is about 4 cl, or a double is up here. I mean, he made those into like little embers. Put them sweetbreads over there, and they started smoking. Man, they just took off. All them dripping started hitting down. They're actually touching the coals as well. That ventilator working overtime. So because we're being babies, we get this. If you really come here to drink, they just give you the bottle. Not by this is the eggplant, eggplant, yogurt. Smoked eggplant with yogurt. 
a mixture of the tomato, fresh tomatoes, peppers, onions with the pomegranate molasses uh, is uh, drizzled on top as the dressing. Then grilled onions and garlic again with the pomegranate molasses, some chili pepper and uh, salt. <laughs> All right, let's get in the spirit of it. Do you remember by now? We have done it over a few times. What's the word? Some like a guy now. Sherefer. Sherefer. Wow. You chase it with a salty turnip and a purple carrot drink. Ho oh, ho. Nothing like following your alcohol with pickle juice. Insanely hot. Eggplant the yogurt. So we actually got our sweetbreads, which is going to be the thymus gland. Thymus gland is what produces those uh, white blood cells to help keep you from getting sick. And us, it's right here. It's right behind your sternum. And here, in Turkey, your delicacy. Ooh. You got a little bit of a chew to it. Really just fatty and juicy. Make you take the fat on the outside of meat and just get charred over those coals. It's like all the best parts of it. Ooh, I can breathe now. Sometimes you gotta take the eating up a notch. The eggplant, yogurt, little bread, sweet bread. So we got some liver, they're doing the lamb here. And how they arrange their kebab is, they do like a piece of liver, and they're gonna put pieces of the tail fat in between every now and then. So that's how you gotta get this, gotta get a little bit of each. Don't mind if I do. A very, very sweet, tender piece of liver, spiced nicely with the red pepper, salted nice, lots of cumin. It's not as delicate as like a chicken liver. It's got a little more gaminess. Not in a bad way either. Just more of a pungent taste. And that actually has developed just a lovely sweetness. The last one we're getting is the Donna Kebab. Uh, hence the name of this place, hence the name of this kebab. It comes from Adana City. Very popular, traditionally made with lamb, the tail fat from lamb, some red pepper, and minced it together. Apparently I've had too much racky. I keep grabbing this with my hands for some reason. The key to this is the knife they use for this. It's a very special knife. I forgot how to pronounce it. I know it translates to like shield because you'll see it, it's huge. And the way it works and minces the tail fat and the meat together results in just a unique texture where it's minced. It's still got these little chunks. So you burst into these little, little tiny pockets of fat that just coat your mouth. Local, foreigner, alien, human being. It's one of the best things you'll ever eat. But that's gonna do it for today. Thank you again, brother. We're gonna sign off. Keep enjoying. A couple of dishes we got going on. I hope y'all enjoyed it from this area of Istanbul. This is day three of four here. So make sure to stay tuned for the next one, which will be coming at you from the other side, on the Asia side. So, Max, peace.